Salam X. Woo Hello, we are Salam X. Yes. We are here to talk a little bit about the future of fashion. We have several topics that we go through. I mean, we have a big crew, so we're jumping quite fast through the topics. Um, first of all, we go through um, AI-generated images, AR face filters, digital clothing, virtual worlds, and augmented reality. We have several specialists to talk through this. Here's an um, overview of the projects that we are talking about, and I'm giving the word to Jens. Thank you. <coughs> so hi, I'm Jens. I'm the computer scientist behind the Beauty Gun project. So Beauty Gun is a project where we basically trained an AI to recognize an image of beauty and in the end let it tell us what beauty is in their eyes and apply this to the face of Kylie Jenner. And the end result of that was this cover for Dazed Beauty. Um, for me, the story behind all this project is a bit more interesting still than the cover. <laughs> so, um, Beauty Gun is of course two components, beauty and gun. The beauty part was selecting what an initial image or some image of beauty is that we can learn from. For this, um, Lucas and Nene picked, I believe it was about 12,000 uh, hand-picked images from Instagram that showed the most colorful makeup that we could find. And um, we used that to train a generative adversarial network. That's where the gun part comes from, which is basically two, adversar two adversarial um, AI players that try to recreate the images that we present to them. And the really interesting aspect about this is that um, they try not to replicate the images one by one, but to find the underlying essence of the images. Some kind of a semantic pattern language of the beauty images that we presented in the first place. And the interesting part about this is that we not only get like really real faces, but also elements that are more like just swirls of color, which are also represented in the beauty images in the start, but are a more complete view of what the beauty images represent than what we um, kind of intuitively think of beauty in, um, in the human eye. And the really interesting part is, for example, that this can be used in design thinking as a tool to just spread your horizon. And that's why I really like this project and all that has come with it. <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. Hey guys. Yeah, so uh, I'm Marta Steinfort. To make it even more complicated, I'm not part of the Salem guys, but I'm from Seesucht. Uh, we are a group of creators developing exceptional visual images and animations for our media. So thanks Fashion Tech for having me and Salem for inviting me. And I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a perspective about augmented reality. I mean, you've heard the term, I'm sure. Uh, you can see the exhibition we did in the back of the space if you haven't done that. And so AR uh, is like the new buzzword on the block, but I always like to kind of give it a little bit of perspective because as usually those technologies are not new, but actually very old. So what's augmented reality? Well, you know, as the name suggests, you augment your world by superimposing information on it. And um, so traditionally that's something you have like in a fighter pilot uh, helmet, a hut display, as you uh, can see here. So this is not from like the latest generation of uh, fighter aircrafts, but this is actually from a 1943 Second World War British plane. And uh, it's a reflector side, that's the technology that's called. It was invented in 1900, so this is actually very old stuff. Uh, and this is technically AR. Now, uh, the next thing, well, I mean, we're jumping because I don't have that much time, but the next thing is this, and this is uh, called the uh, Sword of Damocles. As you can see, this is a contraption 
suspended above the bearer's set because it's so heavy that it would kind of crush you if it wouldn't be suspended on the ceiling. And this is um, uh, done by a researcher called Ivan Sutherland, who actually also came up with basically all the modern computer user interfaces that you know and use all day. And it was made in 1966 at MIT. And while that is Famous, uh, famous for being the first VR as in virtual reality a device. It's actually also an AR device because this is what the viewer sees. Sorry for the bad image quality, but it, you know it's basically a cube superimposed on reality. So that's where we are. Uh, I mean, where we were. So this is ancient stuff. So why is it interesting now? Well, because now technology developed far enough so that we don't need a sort of Damocles or uh, device like maybe the HoloLens. You can also see in an exhibition, which is very interesting in B2B cases in the industry. But now we can do the same shit on our smartphone. And this is where it gets really interesting. Video doesn't play. Well, sorry, there was supposed to be a video. But anyway, the IR filters. So th this is interesting because it's very accessible. Everyone can use it. So it starts having a very relevant cultural impact. You're going to hear more about right now. Thank you. Hi. So uh, we live in a world of hyper-individualization um, when it was once about the classy beauty and uh, pretty yourself up. It's now about being different, special, diverse. And um, that's why we are so fascinated about aliens, because alien, uh, alias, Latin, the other, is the prototype of this movement. And with face filters, we can look different and we can look how we want to look and not how we have to look. So, yeah. Um, it has a big impact on your physical life as well because when you feel pretty with these filters, it has an impact of your physical life because your virtual, the picture of your virtual uh, self is, has the same value than your physical being. So. As well, uh, to go further on that, it's that uh, you even enable yourself to emancipate, sorry, to emancipate yourself from the, um, from your physical body. So your, your self, like your mind is also in the virtual and you can alter your, uh, ip, um, your appearance, how you want it to be, uh, and all these, um, all these looks, all these, um, all these aesthetics, which were exclusive to a certain amount of audience, like expressive makeup and um, crazy, crazy hair, crazy blue faces. They are through technology they made accessible to a broad audience. So when it's like the mask creator which creates physical masks only enables himself or like the models he is working with or she is working with to, uh, to have this uh, kind of different beauty aspect. Now with face filters everybody can use it. Yes. Uh, and I want to um, say another thing. For example, with face filters, you can look very special. So when you have like stick out ears, like Siegel on, and the face filter looks more, more cooler on you than with the classy beauty standard face. So you will love your stick out ears in physical life as well. Hi guys, uh, I can actually see you. I'm Paul. Uh, I'm a computer scientist and a fashion designer. And the interesting part is that uh, the personality that we have on Instagram has already started to melt with our physical self. So virtual fashion will actually be such a big thing since you can track not only the face but also fingers and the body. And the fashion industry has just started to notice that. And 
um, interesting part is that um, virtual fashion will be visible and is already visible in VR glasses and AR glasses. It's just a matter of time until the big brands start to come in and produce it. But um, this can, can be perfect because it can in some way democratize fashion and it can completely, uh, completely change the way we perceive it because uh, in VR and in AR, there is no rules, you know? You, there is no gravity and you can be whoever you want to be. Um, you can see here there is an interesting project that um, was done with Vetmont together. So um, actually, AR can be built into the physical world uh, by using reference points and then uh, our reality, our physical reality can then start to be extended. Um, and this can be interesting for all the, all the um, points of fashion, retail, uh, design, uh, marketing. And um, the thing is that these glasses, as you may know, they're Oculus and they will actually be available to the masses and they will come since it is a game engine. And you know, the game people, they laugh about us because <laughs> Marvelous Designer has designed clothing for avatars for years. And now, uh, fashion people somehow want to do it. But um, yeah, very interesting where this might lead. So um, the future is maybe only digital clothing. Uh, no, actually now is already digital clothing and the future will be even brighter. <laughs> cool, thanks. Yeah, just to um, bridge the gap between uh, fashion and gaming a little more, I'd like to close this round by presenting a little project that I did in last December, which was done for Schirn Konsole in Frankfurt. And um, this is actually um, entirely based off like a single, uh, of a single environment in a game engine, um, Unreal Engine in this case. And um, what's nice about it is that you are actually able to implement that in a very lightweight way and at the same time have all your outputs, be it like print, video, like an interactive environment, a live environment um, for live motion capture as well, which is pretty interesting. Um, you can have all of that in the same tool, in the same engine, and it's um, centralized and it's pretty easy to like put out the content once you put this ecosystem together. Um, here's a few pictures from the workflow of it all. It was done in um, pretty standard 3D tools, but I think the really interesting part is the actual environment and the interaction that I implemented, which is using um, various like Xbox Kinect sensors so that um, the event that the poster was actually advertising for could have the same implementation on screen, um, depending on how the people moved in a space. Um, thank you so much, everyone, and thanks for having us here at Fashion Tech.